So again, good morning, everyone. And uh, you know, in psychology, they say that all of us have a way of perceiving things that happen in this world, whether that's positive, negative, or neutral. Okay, and uh, based on our perception, we would have a thought pattern. Now, our thought pattern could also be positive, and it also could be negative. Okay, and based from that thought pattern where we will have our mood, okay? Now, if we have positive uh, thought patterns, it will also create a positive mood. If we're, we're, we're have, having a negative thought pattern, we will also have a negative mood. That's why people who are suffering from anxiety and depression, they have this so-called negative thought, thought pattern. And they would go to a psychologist, and the psychologist is really uh, pointing that out to them uh, their co cognitive distortion and, and, and would lead them into changing that thought pattern into a more realistic and hopefully a more positive one too. Okay? So basically, uh, what, what the uh, psychologists are doing is called cognitive behavioral therapy. It's changing the thought pattern so that it will also change the mood that you have. And one of the cognitive distortion that people who are suffering from anxiety and depression is so-called mental filter. So what do I mean by mental filter? We, we, when, we, we, when we see things and we, we, we use mental filter, we take the negative and we remove the positive or we disqualify the positive. And uh, uh, maybe an example for priests is that you know, w w after preaching a sermon, um, uh, a lot of parishioners would, would really commend you for your preaching, and then one person loves you. After that, you feel so discouraged, you feel down, you know, you, you think that you're a lousy preacher because you're so focused on that one criticism over all the positive that you've received. And, 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 uh, and whenever we, we, we see, when, when we have a negative outlook in life, we create this negative vibration towards people. And people could feel that. People could easily pick it up. Okay? And, and, and in the Philippines, we have a term for these people. We call it the nega. Nega, short for negative. And, 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 and for me, I, I, I struggle with that for so many years in my life. Okay? Because of my negative outlook, I was diagnosed with severe, de severe depression and anxiety. I had to go to psychologists every two weeks, every month. Okay? And because I had a, a, a negative outlook I I in life. Okay? So, in this, in this COVID-19 lockdown, maybe uh, what I'm afraid of is a lot of people are just focusing on the, the negative that is happening. Okay? Maybe, you know, you love, you've lost your job. You know, you, you're worried, you know, where will you get the money? Maybe you, you, you're, you're, you're thinking that you're, you're locked down in the, in your, at your home and you're feeling you're imprisoned. It's that you, you, you don't have this freedom to go out, to hang out with your friends. Or maybe you're, 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 you're bored. You have too much time on your, on, 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 in your life and you don't know what to do with it. You're just bored. Or maybe you, 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 you're, uh, you're focusing on your family member who's getting under your skin and you're getting impatient. Or maybe, maybe you're, you're, you, you have a negative outlook of the future. Oh, this will be the norm. You know, uh, things will not change. You're, we're focusing on the negative. That's the mental filter. And we don't see the positive that is happening. And, and, and for us, we need, to, we need to train our minds to see the positive that is happening here. We also need to see the, light, the, the, the lighter side of things. We need to see the humor that is happening. You know, I, I, was, I was talking to uh, a friend of mine, uh, and, and she was telling me that uh, because of the lockdown, she couldn't go to her hairstylist. And because of that, she said, you know, it, before the lockdown, she looks like Brooke Shields, you know, the, the 
um, the American actress famous in the 80s. Not that, right now, she said she looks like broke shields. And I, and I told her, you know, I have the same feeling also. Like before the lockdown, I look like Brad Pitt. But that, right now, because I couldn't go to the barber, now I look like Brad Pitt. <laughs> and we were just laughing. And, and, but, but don't add the word arm to the name of, of, of Brad Pitt, okay? Because I don't want people to be saying, Father Ken, you look like Brad Pitt arm pit, okay? <laughs> so just, just I, I hope Brad Pitt is not listening to this homily. I don't want to be sued for making fun of his name. Uh, but we need to find humor. Okay, I'm not saying that we, we, we become insensitive of what's happening out there. Yes, we have to pray, you know, for, for all the sufferings that are happening right now. We have to help, yes. But we need to find the lighter side of things. We need to find you. We need to laugh or else we'll go insane. We'll go insane. So look at the positive. Look at the lighter side of things. Look at the humor. Find humor. We need to unearth the gold. How many of you have seen the, the, the TV series uh, Gold Rush? It started in 2010, so it's been going on for, for 10 seasons now, 10 years, okay? And in that, in that TV series, it's a group of miners, and you know, they face a lot of like, challenges, obstacles in finding gold in Canada and also in the United States. Now, if, if, if it's so easy to find gold, you know, all of us will be rich, and that, and that TV series wouldn't last long. Just one episode found all the gold. But there's a reason why the season is, ten, uh, is, is going for so long right now, for 10 seasons, because there's, there's an adventure. There's, there's a challenge there that people love to watch. You know, it's, it's difficult, but, you know, it's possible. You could find gold. And when you find gold, then, you know, it, it's, it's a great way to celebrate, really. So we need to unearth the gold that is happening right now in this COVID-19 lockdown. Now, may, you know, during this homily, I hope you'll be able to see the good that is happening. One good that I could see that is happening right now is that people are calling, uh, that God is calling people back to Him. Okay? Now, people are saying that this COVID-19 is, is, uh, is a chastisement from God. Oh, if, if you say that it's a chastisement from God, you're saying that this COVID-19 is God-made. Or maybe some people are saying, oh, no, 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 this is not God. This is man-made. This is man-made, and because this is man-made, then we're, we are experiencing the consequence of it. Now, I don't know whether this is God-made or a chastisement or a man-made. I don't know. All I know is that all things work together for good for those who love Him. All the things that we're experiencing now, right now, God could turn something good about it. And, and people are talking about like, oh, now is the time of the illumination of conscience. Now, I don't know how illumination of conscience would happen. Is it a supernatural thing wherein you get, just get an enlightenment and you see all your sins? Maybe, you know, that is possible. But for me, personally, I think, and I could be wrong, that this illumination of conscience would happen gradually and, and God is going to use everything that, is, that, is, that we are experiencing to contribute to that illumination, illumination of conscience. For example, with the time that you have right now, you know, and, and because of the time that you have right now, people are having the time to reflect. What is the meaning of life? You know, where, where, where am I going? How is my relationship with God? How is my relationship with others? If, if, if you are having a hard time, you know, making the most of your time during right now to reflect upon all this, I, I encourage you to, to watch my YouTube videos. Uh, I'm uh, making this uh, series called Lockdown Boot Camp Series on my YouTube channel, Father Ken Lau. And there, you know, um, I, I'm leading people really to, 
uh, in this boot camp to really reflect, you know, and make the most out of the time. I guarantee if you just do what I'm asking you to do in that lockdown boot camp series, it, it will, it will, um, it, you will grow in your relationship with God and you will also grow in your relationship with others and you will find fulfillment in what, in, as you go through this lockdown period. The second thing that the Lord is using is that fear. People are afraid. People are afraid that they could contract this, this virus and they could die. And I've heard confessions already, you know, for, for, for the past few weeks. People are coming back. People who have, who have, who have been away for, for so many years who are living in sin. God is using that fear to call them back. And they're doing a general confession. It's a wonderful thing to see. It's like a miracle happening. It's like the prodigal son coming back to home. The, 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 the third thing that God is using is that the Lord is using the difficulties in our life so that we would turn to Him. Maybe you're experiencing difficulty financially, in your relationship, in your health, whatever. The Lord is using that opportunity for you to turn to Him. The fourth thing is the, that the Lord is using is in, in the area of entertainment. Uh, you know, Satan... Uh, uses this platform of entertainment to destroy individuals, families, and societies. But right now, God is using entertainment as His platform. If you just listen to the praise and worship songs lately, there's just so, so much anoint, anointing on those songs. Like every morning, I would exercise for 45 minutes, either jogging or biking. I would listen to praise and worship songs, and I just praise the Lord. So make the most out of it. The, also in, in the entertainment, God is using movies and TV series, especially this TV series called Chosen. Watch it. I've seen so many um, uh, movies about Jesus, about the Bible, but this one is different. There's a special anointing in, these, in this uh, TV series called The Chosen. It made it so real. Whenever I would watch it, I would be in tears. It's like God, I'm, I'm being there inside that scene and really encountering Jesus in a very personal way and experience His love and mercy for me. I could also relate with the weaknesses and the idiosyncrasies of the disciples, how God has chosen them. If, God has cho if Jesus has chosen them, God could also choose me and you with all our imperfections, our weaknesses, our sinfulness. God could choose us. God, God, God could choose us. Choose us. So watch, watch that. Watch that with your family. I guarantee you, it will touch your soul. Okay, God is using that. The other thing is with the use of social media. You, we, we, we see that right now. If this pandemic lockdown happens, happened 20 years ago, you won't have access to this. You won't have access to mass. You won't be able to have access uh, on, on talks, or homilies, whatever. Because 20 years ago, there's no Facebook, there's no Twitter, there's no YouTube, there's no Zoom. Facebook started in 2004. Twitter, uh, well, YouTube. YouTube started in 2005. Twitter started in 2006. Zoom, the one that we're using right now, started in 2011. We don't have the technology 20 years ago. So right now, God is using this to be able to reach out to more people. Last February 29, we had our, we have our, here at St. Mary's, we have this uh, night of worship of ministry that we do every month. We invite speakers to, to give talks. We would usually get like maybe 250 people who would come for that event. On weekday masses here at St. Mary's, we would get like 20 to 30 people. On Sundays, we would get like maybe, uh, uh, let's say, 450 people who would come. On February 29, a parishioner here in, at St. Mary's had a prophetic vision of birds of various kinds going to the rooftop of St. Mary's and being fed. And at that time, it didn't make sense. After two weeks of that prophetic image given to this uh, person, 
the lockdown happened. We, we, we couldn't have any night of worship of ministry anymore. The March uh, event got canceled. On, on March, I think March 9, we had our last mass here. So we started live streaming. And since we started live streaming, 3,000 to 5,000 are watching on our weekday masses. 8 to 10,000 are watching on our Sunday mass. And you will be surprised where these people are watching. Africa, China, Japan, Indonesia, New Zealand, Central America, South America, different kinds. People are coming. They're coming on the rooftop because they're being fed. Right now, we're preaching on the rooftop. We're preaching on the rooftop. And, and right now, I think, you know, uh, we're, 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 we're fulfilling what, what's in uh, Mark 16, verse 15. What's in Mark, Mark chapter 16, verse 15? It talks about Jesus commanding his disciples, go throughout the whole world and preach the gospel to all people. It's happening right now. And we don't even to go out. We're saving money. We don't eat, need to take planes and going like that. Here, people are coming. We're preaching to people of all nations. We're proclaiming the good news. And what is the good news? The first message that we need to, set, to proclaim is not about repentance of sin. No, it's about God's love. In Pope Francis, in Evangelii Gaudium, the encyclical called uh, The Gospel of Joy, he said this, the first proclamation must ring out over and over. Jesus Christ loves you. He gave his life to save you. And now he's living at your side every day to enlighten, strengthen, and free you. This First, pr first proclamation is called first, not because it exists at the beginning and can then be forgotten or replaced by other more important things. It is first in a qualitative, qualitative sense because it is the principal proclamation, the one which we must hear again and again in different ways. God loves you. God loves all of us. Okay? And also, this is what uh, Father Bob, our, our, father, our founder, Father Bob uh, Bedard, uh, the founder of a Companions uh, of the Cross, said also. Okay? Uh, so, you know, in, in, in also another thing is that I think during in, in this un, unprecedented time, the Lord is going to raise up more and more anointed preachers. I truly believe that. Okay? If, if, if you watch the, 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 the homily of Father Mark Goring last, last Sunday, there's an anointing in that. There's power in that preaching. And the Lord is wanting to raise more and more anointed preachers like Father Mark Goring. Now, Father, there's only one Father Mark Goring in the world. And nobody could, 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 could be like him. He has his own style. You know, if, if, I, if I start like, you know, do, do, doing like that, it, it's not me. Okay? We all have different styles of preaching. But all of us, our preaching could be anointed. And you don't need to be an eloquent speaker to be able to do that. Just look at our first reading today. Okay? First reading today, what says there? When the day of Pentecost had come, Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Peter, a fisherman uneducated, didn't even study theology, didn't study philosophy, didn't go to, to Toastmaster to have this, uh, you know, uh, uh, preaching class. No. What he, he, was, he was filled with the Holy Spirit. There was an anointing in his word. Okay? So here it says, Now when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. You see here the, 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 the anointing. The, the people were, were cut to the heart. They were convicted. And because of that, it says here, so those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. The Lord will raise more and more anointed preachers. And because of that, it will harvest a lot of souls on earth. And that is, you know, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, will come to fulfillment. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. That's going to happen. And it's happening right now. Father Bob, our fa founder of the Companions of the Cross, also said this, that the words of the Bible contains, the, the words of the Bible contains, have a power to convict, to bring people to faith. After all, Gospels were written so that you might believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through this faith, you have, would have life in his name. And Father Bob is quoting John chapter 20, verse 31. See here? And, and, and as I've said, Jesus is using all this, all the things that are happening right now, to call us back to him. In our second reading, what did it say? For you were going astray like sheep, but now you have returned to the shepherd and guardian of your soul. Before this COVID-19, we have so many distractions. Right now, Jesus is using all this to call our attention. For us to get to know him, you know, maybe for the first time, or maybe if you've known him, to get to know him more, to fall in love with him, you know, and to be able to hear his voice, to be able to hear his voice and to be, be able to follow him. The Lord is our shepherd. Today is Good Shepherd Sunday. Whatever difficulty that you're going through, Jesus is your good shepherd. He's leading you. It says in our psalm today, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Find comfort in Jesus, who is your good shepherd. And, you know, the, the Lord wants to lead us during this unpre unprecedented time, you know, uh, and so that, you know, he will be able to lead us to eternal life, but not only just eternal life. He wants to give us life, fullness of life. You know, it says here in our gospel today, it says, I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And this is not based on circumstances. You know, whether, whether you're sick or we don't have money or whatever. This is not based on circumstances. It is based in your relationship with Jesus. He wants to give you life. He wants to give you joy. He wants to give you peace. So if you're seeing a lot of like negative in what's happening right now in your life, keep digging. That's all, my, all I can say. Keep digging so that you'll be able to unearth the gold. And, and, and so that, you know, the, 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 the scripture passage in Matthew 13, verse 45, will happen. And what's that? And that's the parable of, that's the parable of the pearl. And it says here that the king, it says, Jesus said there, the kingdom of heaven is like this. A man is looking for fine pearls. He goes and sells everything he has and buys that pearl. We need to unearth the gold. We need to find the pearl of great price, which is Jesus. Hopefully, as you, as you, as you keep on digging, you know, you'll be able to find the greatest value, the greatest gold 
and, and be able to find the, 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 the pearl of great price. Okay? Because as you look for joy, there's a name for that. As you're looking for peace, there's a name for that. If you're, if you're looking for life, there's a name for that. And that name is Jesus. May you be able to find, may you be able to unearth, unearth the gold that God wants you to find in this lockdown season.